There's a common issue that you can run into with React state updates that can be a little bit tricky if you don't know what's going on here. And this particularly relates to using mutable values in your state updates. So in React, anything can be used as a state value. And what I mean by that is you can have booleans, numbers, strings, objects, arrays, all those JavaScript data types can be state values in React. All that is valid. However, a little extra caution needs to be taken when using mutable values. So a non-mutable value is going to be like a primitive value in JavaScript. So this is going to be something like a Boolean, a number, a string. They're, they're things that you can't change without making a new copy of them. Whereas with a mutable value, like an object or an array, you can add values to an array without creating a new copy of that array or a new reference of a different array. You can just change the values within the array. And same thing with an object. You can change the values of a certain property on an object without creating an all new object. Mutable values like objects and arrays should still be treated as read only in React. And React recommends this straight from their docs. You can read here in their updating objects in state page in their react.dev forward slash learn documentation. But they recommend treating these mutable values as read only values. And they mentioned that this makes sure that React knows when it actually needs to update the state on your page. Because if you have the same reference to the same object and you're just changing the values within those ob objects, React might not know that it actually needs to re-render and update your web page because it it's still referencing the same object. So a better approach is creating an all new copy of the object or replacing the object altogether or the same thing with an array. So we're going to look at two examples of this where we're going to have this form input where you might be using an object as your state. And then we're also just going to use a list of random numbers to demonstrate using arrays as state and the best way to update those. So let's go to the code here and you can ignore a lot of this. A lot of this is just Tailwind CSS classes, but effectively at the top of this component, we have form data and set form data that we initialize as an object with a name and email and random numbers and set random numbers that we initialize as an empty array. And then we have a handle input change function to where when a user types in the name input or types in to the email input, we need to make sure that we are updating the form data correctly. And same thing for the add random number. When they click the add random number button, we need to make sure we add another random number to this random numbers array. And here below, you can see this is where our name input is. This is where our email input is. And then we have our random number list and our add a random number button. So we need to handle those and handle these state updates for objects and arrays correctly. So let's first focus on this form data here. When the input changes, how should we update this form data? Well, what we don't want to do is we wouldn't want to just take this form data dot name is equal to the new value because then we would just be mutating the state value, which is something that we don't want to do. So instead of doing this, what if we did something like if name is equal to email, then we want to set form data and then we want to pass in the email and then that's going to be the value. And then else, if that's not true, so we'll say else, then we want to set the form data to be the name now is going to be the value. This, this might seem like it makes sense. Like, okay, if, if the input name is of type name, update the name value in our state. And I know it's a little confusing because name and name, but you can see the name of this input is of type name and the name of this input is of type email. So if it's of type email, update the email value in our set form data. And if it's of type name, update the name value. But do you know what's wrong here? 
well, let's let's go see. Let's go check our UI. I'm going to refresh to make sure everything's everything's good. This is going to be my name, which looks good. Name, name is Ryan. But now let's update my email. So if I do contact at Ryan, and you see when I start typing in my email, my name disappears here. So my state for my name doesn't look like it's working. Now, now this is still has Ryan in it because it's going to fall back to not being a controlled component anymore. It's just going to have the HTML value being set here, which is totally fine. But you can see my name and my email here look a little bit off. So if we go back to the code and I scroll down, you can see when I'm displaying my form data dot name and form data dot email here under my inputs, like I am here, my email is correct. My name is not showing Ryan. So let's type back into Ryan here. Let's start typing my last name. And you can see as soon as I start typing, it gets rid of my email. And the reason this is happening is because if we scroll up, when the type is email, we are setting the form data to a new object that only has an email property and it no longer has a name property. So we are effectively getting rid of our name property when we update our set form data with a new object that has that email property only. And same thing when we have our name property, we get rid of the email property. So the way that we can fix this is we could either, like in this instance, this would be fine. I can spread the form data previously that we have in there and then just update the email value. And we can do this below as well. This is one way that we can solve this. And then if I come back and now I type Ryan, which works here, and then let me type my email. And you can see when I type in my email here, Ryan is not removed because we're maintaining that state because we're making sure to use JavaScript spread and syntax to spread the current form data, all the other values into our new object, and then also update the email property. And we're doing that for both of them. Now, a other completely valid way to do this, and this, I would probably take this approach just because it makes me feel a little bit better, but I would probably pass a function that gives prev form data and then return a new object where we spread the prev form data and then we update the email property to be the value. And what we could actually do here as well is we could get rid of the this if else syntax and we could just say instead of just setting it as this property we can use square brackets name so as a property here we're going to use javascript dynamic properties to, to set the property name to whatever name we get from the event.target and then our value is going to be our value and then we're spreading our previous form data into this new object that we're going to return here and if I think I'm doing everything correctly, let me refresh. We'll do it again. So I'll do Ryan, some email, and you can see everything works as expected. So with objects, make sure to create a new object, but also make sure that you copy all of your previous values over from that object if you want, if that's the behavior you want. So you're not losing all those other values from your property, because that is a common mistake that you can make. Now, how should we handle arrays? Well, it's going to be a very similar thing here. So when we want to add a new number to our array, what we can do is we can, instead of just doing like random numbers dot push and then math dot random, instead of just doing that, pushing a new number to this state variable, we don't want to do that because we don't want to mutate it. We want to avoid mutations in our state updates. The preferred approach here is set random numbers. And then what do we want to make sure we want to do? Well, we wouldn't want to just set the random numbers to a new number. So math.random, because then we're going to lose all of our previous numbers in our array. So what we want to do instead is we're going to do the same thing. We're going to say prev numbers passing in a function. And I go over this in my last video, in case you're not sure how passing a function to set state works. We're going to pass a function that gets the prev numbers. We're going to return an array. We're going to spread the prev numbers into the array. And then we're going to add a new number. That's going to be math 
dot random. And then we could also, I don't know, times it by a hundred to make it a little bit bigger numbers as well. So now if I click add random numbers, you see it adds all these numbers to this array, which is what we want without replacing them and removing all the previous numbers. And we could also, we wouldn't necessarily need to pass a function in this case. We could just pass in an array and take the random numbers, spread those into the array, and then do the same thing with math.random times 100. And we could also like floor this so it's not so many decimal points. And then I just refresh to make sure that everything's reset. And you can see it still works as expected. But if we forget to spread those previous numbers in, then what you're going to see is it is just going to do a replace job here to where it just generates one new number every time because we're not remembering to spread those other numbers in there. So when using mutable values in React state, make sure to treat those as read only. So React knows when it needs to re-render your page and keeps everything consistent. And when you're treating them as read only, you're probably going to need to create new copies of those arrays or objects or mutable values. Or you could also, instead of creating a copy, just pass in a array directly to set state like we did here. But when either creating a copy or doing a replacement like we're doing here, make sure that you're still keeping in the previous properties of the object, if it's an object like we did here, or the previous values of an array like we did here as well. We won't get into uh, arrays are actually objects in JavaScript because that's a whole nother thing. But just make sure for those immutable values that you're doing both and not losing that previous data in those mutable objects. So hopefully this video helped you out and I'll see you in that next one.